In this video you will learn how to create a React library, publish it to npm with and without TypeScript. So the first question is why do we need to create a React library at all? And typically you are creating your React project and maybe you have some shared components. This is totally fine, you don't need to create a React library. But if you have more than one project, then you might want to share some of the components or utility methods between two different projects. If you are working in the company where you have lots of different projects, it makes a lot of sense to put all your shareable components in the additional project which is a library and reuse them across the whole company. Another case that you might have you want to create some React components and publish it for other people on npm so other people can install your library, add your components to their project and use them. And here are two files that are already prepared for us. First of all it is git ignore and here I have node modules and dist because we will push everything inside git repository and these are two folders that we must ignore. Additionally to that I have a package JSON. Most important part here is the name and here must be a unique name of your organization. For example I always use prefix MLA because Monster Lessons Academy and then the name of this library. These are React components, this is why I wrote here comps. Now we have here a version and that's basically it. And the first thing that we need to do, we must add inside peer dependencies React. And it is important to make it a peer dependency and not just a dependency. As you are building a React library, it will be used in React projects, which actually means React must be installed already in that project. This is why it makes a lot of sense to use React as a peer dependency. Now let's create several components that we want to pack inside our library. This is why here inside our root we can create a new folder which is called source and inside I will create a button component. Additionally here will be one more folder input component and you can pack here as many components as you want. Now inside our button folder we want to create button j6 file and also button css file. Here we will store the css for our button. Let's write here some class that we can use and I will prefix all my styles with MLA because all styles will be global. In this case we can know ok these are styles for this specific library. And here I can say that for our button we want to provide a font size and it will be 16 pixels. Now let's create our button component. So here we want to export our button and we have some props. For example disabled because this is a button, then text and don't click event. Now inside we can return just a button with the type button where we are providing disabled property which we got from the props, then on click which we also got from the outside and we must provide here a class name that we just created, it is MLA button. Inside our button we want to render text that we also get from the outside. And we successfully created our reusable component. On the top here we want to import CSS of our button. But it is not all, additionally here I want to create a file index.js6 where we will re-export everything that we need from this folder. And here I will write export star from our button. The main point is inside your component you might have like 20 different child components and maybe you don't need to re-export all of them. And this is the entry point to our folder button which actually means this is something like public API which we expose for people. And we don't really want for all people to import our button like import button from and here will be our library MLA comps slash button slash button. It is not comfortable and it is difficult to change later. We want to use it like import button from MLA comp and this is it. In order to achieve that we are creating this index.js6 file inside button and additionally inside root here. So here will be all our root imports we can write here export star from and here we will write our button which is actually button slash index.js6. In this case here we will have all our exports from specific component. Now let's do exactly the same with the input. First of all we need here input CSS and also input JS6 file. Inside CSS let's create a class MLA input and we want to provide here font size for example 18 pixels. 
Now here let's jump inside our input GSX and we want to export here our new component input where we are getting some props and it will be disabled, then label and on change event. And here inside we simply want to return an input. But as we want to return an input with the label, we must create some wrapper around. This is why here I will use fragment from React and inside I want to pack a label with the text label and after this we can render our input of type text with disabled property on change property and class name that we just created it is a melee input our component is created now we must re-export it this is why here will be index j6 and here we want to export star from our component input that we just created and we must also jump inside our root index j6 and export here also everything from our component input to make it working. Now we must build our library and there are different tools for that. We can use things like Babel for example, Rollup, but I highly prefer Vid. If you don't know, Vid is a project generator and also a web server, but actually we can use it also to build our library. This is why let's jump inside console and write npm install Vid and it should be a dev dependency. Now inside root we must create a file with config.js where we are providing everything that vid needs in order to build our library. This is why here we can export default, define config and we are getting it from vid. And this is an object with the build property and inside we want to provide a lib because we are building a library and here we must provide an entry. And in order to generate correct entry path we must import here resolve from path. And here we can resolve our directory name and the path source slash index.gsx. After this we must provide the name of our library, it was MLA comps. And the last one is the file name, which is an index. As Vit uses rollup underneath, we must provide an additional option. And here will be rollup options. And we can say here that we have an external and we are providing here React which actually means we are telling rollup that we are building React components. And this is the whole config that we need in order to build our library. I'm sorry for interruption, but I just want to let you know that I have a membership here on the channel that you can join to support me. It will give you access to the new videos earlier, emojis and priority replies to your comments. Now let's jump back into the video. Now I want to jump back inside our package JSON and inside script let's create a new script build which will execute vid build. Now here we can jump inside console and run npm run build. As you can see here vid build was called and here all our modules were transformed and now what we are getting is a dist folder which we get ignored and inside we are getting index mgs. As you can see this is a plain javascript. Here is our minified javascript and CSS in additional file. But as you can see here is a small problem, we are getting only MLA button and not our CSS from the input. This happens because inside our input, inside index.j6, I forgot on the top to import this index CSS file. Now if I rebuild my project and jump back inside our dist, here inside styles you can see not only MLA button but also MLA input. So if you want to publish your project as a JavaScript library, you are done. This is the step where you need to stop and you simply write npm publish after some small adjustments of package.json. But before we do that, I want to show you how to improve your library by using here TypeScript. Why do we need TypeScript? Because we really want for all our components to get validated props, so we know what we must provide inside these components and it makes a lot of sense to build all your components or utility libraries with the help of TypeScript. This is why here inside console we must install first of all TypeScript as a dev dependency and also types react also as a dev dependency. Now we must create a config for our TypeScript. This is why here in the root we can add tsconfig.json and I will paste the standard configuration inside. Most importantly here we are providing the g6 module react module yes next and our directory dist. After this we must update our code. First of all we must jump inside with configuration and here will be not source index g6 but index t6. Now let's jump inside source and update it. It will be index.tsx. 
Now let's jump inside the button and change here our index G6 to index T6 and also our button component to T6. Now here inside we simply need to create an interface with all our props. This is why here export interface, it will be button props. And inside first of all we have disabled which is a boolean, then text which is a string and don't click event which is a mouse event handler. And here inside we are providing HTML button element because we have a button component. Now as you can see here we are getting that all our props are any. This is why here we can specify that the whole object is button props and we are done. But here is a small problem. TypeScript screams that React refers to a UMD global but the current file is a module. Consider adding an import instead. We certainly can do that. We can simply import here React and then we don't have this problem. Now we need to do exactly the same with our input. So I am jumping inside input folder and here will be index T6 and input T6. So again here we must create our interface for input props and here we have disabled which is a boolean, then our label which is a string and on change event which will be change event handler and inside we must say that this is an HTML input element. After this we can simply specify our input props as an interface and import react here on the top so TypeScript does not scream at us. So we successfully updated the whole library to TypeScript. Now we must jump inside root and here inside our package JSON we want after TS build to call TSC. And we need to do that because vidbuild can build TypeScript but it won't generate types, it will strip them out completely. But as we are creating library, we wrote TypeScript exactly for all these interfaces. This is why vidbuild generates for us an output but in JavaScript and TSC will generate for us types. This is why here I will jump to the console and run npm run build. Let's check what we got. Inside this now we don't only get all our files that we had previously but inside our button we are getting button DTS with all our interfaces and additionally index DTS with our export. This is exactly what we need if you want to put this library inside TypeScript project to get its typing. And last but not least we must update our package JSON. There is an important option here to publish our package and it is called private false. Additionally to that we must specify which file exactly from library we must take in different circumstances. This is why here I want to paste that the main is test index umdgs, the module version is this, these are our types inside dist index dts and our files align inside dist. In order to publish a package to npm first of all you must create an account on npm and secondly inside console you must write npm login. After this command you must put your credentials inside and then your npm console is logged in and you can publish a package. This is why the only thing that I need to write is npm publish. But here is a really important attribute we must provide here minus minus access public. I am hitting here enter and as you can see my project was successfully published and I can jump inside npmgs.com and find my package which is called MLA comps. So we successfully published our package but it would be really nice to test if it is working. In order to do that I want to generate another project by calling vid. So I am calling npm create vid latest and here is testing library which actually means I am simply creating one more react project which does not have anything in common with our library. Here I am choosing react and typescript swc. After this I am jumping inside this folder and calling npm install and npm run dev. As you can see my project was built and in browser we are getting the default page of vid. Now we want to install our new package inside our project. This is why here npm install mla comps. And my library was installed directly from npm. Now here we can jump inside source and we have lots of default files. We don't need assets, appcss, index.css and inside our main ts6 I want to remove import of index.css. And now let's jump inside apps 6 and remove here everything from the top. We also want to remove the whole markup inside our app, we don't need it, 
we simply want to test our library. This is why here I will name it const app, which is an error function. And inside I want to use a button. And as you can see, TypeScript understands directly that button is coming from a MLA comps package that we just installed. And here I am getting a nice autocomplete for all props. For example, if I simply use this component as it is, I am getting TypeScript errors that the following properties are missing, like disabled, text, and don't click. So we must provide here disabled, for example, false, then text, for example, foo, and we have here a non-click event. Let's just make console log foo. And additionally, I want to use our input that we already created. Again, we are getting TypeScript errors here, and we must provide all these properties, like label, bar, disabled, false, and don't change function, where we can create an anonymous function with console log input. And here I want to get a value, so let's write the value, and console log it here. And we must wrap everything with the fragment. As you can see, we don't get any TypeScript errors, and we can jump inside browser, and here we see our foo, which is our button, and here is our bar, which is a label, and then our input. And I'm typing something here. We can open the console and see our event, which was propagated, and we can use it outside. And creating React library with components is really nice, but we didn't test our components at all. If you want to learn how to implement testing inside React for your components, make sure to check this video also.